Well, hey everyone, it's Hudson. I just got a brand new Drobo 5D3. This is the fastest storage solution yet from Drobo. Uh, I, I just wanna be able to expand my base storage. And I've been using Drobo for a long time as my main photo and video library storage platform. And in this video, I just wanna talk a little bit about why that is. I'm gonna run through some photos here in on one photo raw 2018. And I'm gonna show some of the speed that using an external drive, I'll edit a, a raw Nikon D850 file, uh, 46 megapixel file with some really intricate masking and, and raw file edits. And I'll show you just how fast that all works with a Drobo. Uh, you know, I think that Drobos really solve a series of problems that we have as modern photographers and video, uh, video producers. And the fact is that we've getting bigger and bigger raw files, bigger and bigger video files. For someone like me, where you know, my, one, of my, one of my real uh, claims to fame is giant high resolution panoramas where I'm using high resolution images in a matrix to build huge prints that, that can go in enormous public spaces. Uh, and, and those files are so enormous. You're not just taking one 46 megapixel image of a scene. Maybe sometimes I'm, I'm taking 30 or 40 of those and weaving them together to just have infinite enlargeability. Uh, and, and that kind of thing just takes a ton of storage space. Even just working with, with modern computers with small SSD drives and external hard drives, you find yourself running out of space really rapidly. Well, one of the, and we, one of the things that's really nice about Drobo is not only the ability to expand without buying a new hard drive, moving your data around, you can just plug and swap new hard drives into the, into the Drobo. It'll take a whole bunch of different kinds. It'll take SSDs, it'll take the good old fashioned cheap internal hard drives from a desktop system of yesterday. You can just swap them in and out and grow the system as your photo library grows on the same drive without ever having to move things around. It's also, by default, gonna keep all of your data on more than one drive at the same time. So it solves another problem that we all have, which is the need to back up everything. You know, I don't, I don't still consider this a complete backup solution. I think that just in case there's some fault with the Drobo or a power spike or something, you should have your, your data backed up in more than one place. I'll talk about that in a minute. But this at the base level gives you a really nice level of base redundancy because everything is on more than one drive. These green lights here on my new drive show that I have three drives installed. I have three eight terabyte drives. And, and it's actually showing me that they're all in good condition with those green lights. I've been using Drobos for four or five years now. I have a, a 5D that's a Thunderbolt 2 version. And I've had a drive, the light go yellow. Well, when it first happened, I'm like, whoa, what the heck does that mean? Uh, and, and if you just actually pull off this little magnetic cover, it has a little like map key that tells you there's a problem with the drive that needs to be replaced soon. It hasn't gone bad yet. It can also go red. The nice thing is all your data is on more than one. It automatically behind the scenes is keeping everything backed up so that every file is on more than one drive in there. It's all compressed so you don't lose half the space in the drives that you put in. Um, you lose some space, but, but it's pretty optimized. So you can just pull a drive out, put another one in, and you're back in business. It's a really nice thing. As you start growing your, your library and your collection, you put more drives in, it gets bigger just automatically. Um, right now, I'll show you the software that runs that. You've got a nice little status bar showing you each hard drive, what capacity it has, what its health is. Um, you've also got a capacity monitor here that shows you the whole system. I have three eight terabyte drives. There's 14 and a half terabytes of that, basically 24 terabytes available because it's using that backup system. One of the things that's really nice with the 5D3 that I just got is that it's Thunderbolt 3 compatible, which means that theoretically it has a throughput through its system into the computer of up to 40 gigabits per second, which is just crazy, crazy, crazy fast. Now, obviously, if you're using traditional internal hard drives, you're gonna be a little speed limited by the actual platter, platter spinning and being red. Um, Drobo does a cool thing with mitigating that a little bit by also giving you a slot inside the Drobo. If you look here in the uh, status bar, you'll see there's also this little SSD drive. And that's an optional thing that you can install in the bottom of your Drobo. And it's just an SSD drive. You can buy these off Amazon. They're not terribly expensive. This is a 250 gigabyte Samsung one that I installed in here. And that just speeds up the whole system because Drobo will keep track of what files you're using the most. And it'll cache the data that you most commonly use. So maybe, 
the last three or four photo shoots that you're kind of working on editing at the same time, it's gonna notice that you're using those frequently and it's gonna keep all that data cached on that SSD drive for instant access so that it doesn't have to come off the hard drive and be read. So just a speed booster for this thing that gets you a little bit closer to that theoretical throughput. You know, at this point, we don't have drives that can move data as fast as this, this can move into the computer. So it's just not gonna be limited at all by the throughput here. But I like the fact that it's a little bit future-proofed because it has that USB-C and Thunderbolt 3 capability. So, you know, let me showcase just how fast this thing is. And, and I'll show you a file here that's on the Drobo. I think it's in my 2018 Bandon folder. I have it here in an album in Photo Raw. And if I filter down to images that, that I like best from this Bandon trip, and I'm here in On One Effects 2018, and I'm just gonna be working directly on the raw file. This is all non-destructive raw editing. Uh, I've already done a little bit of work here and I'll just show you, you know, how fast this can all be done and I'll do a little masking to just prove it. So I've got several filters activated here. Here's an HDR look filter. Here's a dynamic contrast filter which just adds some pop and some, some sharpness and some, some clarity to the image. Uh, here's a color enhancing filter. You can, you can add all these filters and a whole bunch of others just by clicking this add filter button. Um, I'm gonna go ahead and, and delete that empty slot. Let's say I don't want any dynamic contrast in this, this water in the foreground. Oh, you know, actually, I wanna go in here in local adjustments too. I, I did a little local adjustment where I just lightened the foreground a bit. And I just did that with a graduated tool. You can just move this thing around so that you're lightening just the area under this filter. It's really easy to place and move around and you can adjust sliders just as if you were, you were developing your raw file. And again, all this is totally non-destructive. So there you can see the mass that we've created. I'm gonna jump back into develop. Now we've got a little bit more uh, brightness in this foreground so you can see what we're doing. I'm gonna jump into the overall settings here of, oops, effects. I wanna jump into on one effects here is where I'm working. Um, and I'm gonna go into dynamic contrast, this filter we applied and I just don't necessarily want it to be creating sharpness and contrast in, the, in the, the reflections on the water here. So I'm gonna grab my masking brush, make sure I'm painting this effect out at 100% opacity with my brush. I've got a nice big brush. I can increase, decrease size with the bracket keys here. And I'm just gonna go ahead and paint that dynamic contrast right out of this the soft part of the scene, the reflection. You can see it's just as easy as that. You can see the mask I just created right there. Fast, fast, fast. And this is all coming directly off the Drobo through that fast pipeline into Photo Raw 2018. So let me just summarize really quickly. I think the Drobo is great because you can hot swap drives and build your library bigger and bigger and bigger and your storage solution grows right alongside you. I like the fact that behind the scenes it's intelligently moving every new file that you bring in and placing it in a compressed part of each of the drives so that, so that you've got redundancy. If you have a hard drive failure all of a sudden, you're gonna be able to pull that dead hard drive out, stick a new one in, and the system rebuilds itself without losing a file. Um, I think the fact that it grows and keeps that backup makes it a really nice base solution for keeping your photo library uh, and, and having a good feeling about it being a bit redundant. I still think that you should be using uh, either a series of external hard drives, another Drobo, or maybe even best yet, a cloud-based solution to back up your entire photo library. That cloud-based solution is really nice just in case there's a fire or a flood. I mean, the Drobo will not survive natural disaster. So, um, you know, I, I still believe in keeping an off-site backup of all your data if you love your photography as much as I do. So, I hope you guys have enjoyed. That's why I love the Drobo 5D3, all the Drobo products, really. I've been using a Drobo 5D over there for years for both my video and photos. Uh, these days with teaching as many workshops as I've been doing and, and building as many photo courses, I'm starting to need to diversify and have a Drobo both for video and a Drobo both for photography. And I'll keep both of those backed up off online. So thanks guys for watching. We'll catch you next time.